You know, I've been thinking about some crazy stuff lately. Like, what would happen to my debt if the dollar died? I mean, seriously, we've seen some wild things happen in the world, right? But what about our wallets? Well, if you're my wallet, you ain't got nothing to worry about because I'm broke. I'm broke! But if you have a lot of money saved, these are scary times for you. So, I tell you what, cash at me the money and I'll stress over it for you. Nigga, please. So picture this, the dollar, the greenback, the Benjamin, whatever you want to call it, is on life support. I mean, it's hanging on by a thread. Inflation is skyrocketing and people are starting to lose faith in good old Uncle Sam's currency. You go to the store and a loaf of bread costs you a small fortune. Gasoline? Forget about it, bro. Just walk, because you might have to sell your car just to fill up your tank. First of all, let's talk about credit cards. You know, those little plastic devils or metal if you got money. You got money. Imagine you've been swiping away, living the good life, and suddenly the dollar collapses. What's going to happen? Well, folks, the truth is credit card debt doesn't just disappear in the thin air. Those credit card companies are like vultures, always circling, waiting to pounce. They will keep rising your interest rate because almost all credit cards are variable interest rate cards. So they might even raise your interest rate to an astronomical level just to squeeze every last penny out of you. So you could be sitting there drowning in credit card debt and the dollars going belly up. But you're still on the hook. You can't escape it, my friend. The debt collector will find you. I will find you. And I will kill you. Now. Let's talk about something a little more serious, your auto loan. See, everyone has been buying new cars lately, except for me, because I'm broke, I'm broke. Y'all are buying new cars, even though the car prices have continued to go up. In fact, the average auto loan payment has gone through the roof in the last few years. So the car situation is a little interesting because a car is a depreciating asset. But first, let's talk about you. You see, if the economy goes down the drain, but you just bought a new car for $20,000 in 2022, that brand new car you bought, the money you owe on it, doesn't change. A car is not an asset, it's a liability. But if you bought a $20,000 car at a 4% interest rate, that's what you owe. And next year, when the newer model comes out, let's say because of hyperinflation, it costs $100,000. And now, Due to hyperinflation, your used car is also worth $80,000. Well, you're in luck because the bank can't charge you more money for the fixed loan. You see, when hyperinflation happens, everything goes up. Let's take the car example and say, now everything is five times as expensive. For you slow folks, I'll remind you of the example. You bought a new car last year for $20,000, and next year, they're selling a new car for $100,000. Let's look back to 2022, because before the cars went up, if you remember, real estate shot up first. And because assets like real estate became more expensive, that was one of the reasons businesses had to pass that new expense on to the customer. Now, there were shipping issues that caused delays that made them raise the car prices as well, but that's another video. So real estate first went up which is why things like cars, grocery, gas, and other goods and services became more expensive. But if all of that became more expensive and you didn't get a raise, you wouldn't be able to buy as much stuff. And this might motivate you and the other broke folks to strike. So to make you happy, the businesses gave you a pay raise so you could afford the higher cost of living. But let me be clear, this doesn't happen immediately. It happens over time. So say this year you only made 40000 a year. If everything goes up five times and that car you bought for 20000 cost 100000 in 2025, well, you might be making 200000 in 2026. And your original car that costed you 20000 well, you could pay that off in like six weeks. Imagine that. Now, let's talk about something even scarier. Student loans. I mean, who doesn't have a friend or two, who's buried under a mountain of student loan debt, right? You go to college, get that degree, and you're supposed to land a great job and pay it all off. But that doesn't happen for most people. And in the saddest situations, you have guys who got undergraduate and graduate degrees in finance 
just to find out they wanted to be a YouTuber. You stupid. So yeah, help a broke YouTuber achieve his dreams by subscribing to the channel. But anyways, just like the auto loan debt, most student loan debt are also fixed rate debt. So they can't raise the interest rates anymore. So if you owe 50,000 in student loan debt, they would only get that plus interest based on how long it takes you to pay it all off. But, but now you're making 200,000 working as a cashier at Walmart. So you might as well just pay it all off in three months. And I know by now you're probably thinking, I'm full of shit, but hear me out. You know who owes more debt than you and I put together? Think about it. If you guess your government, you would be correct. You see, most people think the government wouldn't agree to this. It would be a political nightmare and businesses would lose b -b -b billions and go out of business. But the truth is, this has already happened before in different countries. Look at Venezuela, Zimbabwe, and Sudan. Once hyperinflation started, banks were no longer loaning money out because they would have had to charge such a high interest rate, it wouldn't make sense to borrow. And I know some dumb people, but I don't know anyone dumb enough to finance a car at 60% interest rate. Here's something else to think about. What bank would continue to loan out money that would be worthless when it's returned to them? They would be better off investing it in gold. So when the dollar fails, banks will wait for the new currency to start loaning out money again. Hopefully, they bring it back to the gold standard. Or maybe they'll do this new digital currency thing. Who knows? The government has two options. They can let you exchange your old money for the new currency and the government will determine the currency. But if they let you turn your $100 in debt into one new dollar in debt, nothing will have changed, right? If you were in a lot of debt before, you're gonna be in a lot of debt now. It's just gonna be a different currency. That's like if you exchange US dollars for Canadian dollars. Trust me, if your ass was broke in the US, you're gonna be broke in Canada too. And honestly, countries have tried this and this has never worked. The second thing the government can do is like I said before, start a new currency and attach it back to the gold standard. They can start to circulate this new currency and exchange it for the old currency. They can also stop honoring debt concerts in the old currency. In my opinion, this is the only choice the government really has, especially considering the fact that the government not being able to pay their debts is what caused them to print more money in the first place. So just switching the currency wouldn't help the government, but getting rid of that debt would give the government a fresh start. Now, the chances of hyperinflation happening are slim, so we'll just have to sit back and watch what happens. I'm out.